Indiana won the toss. Deferred. Julius Curry at his goal line. Andy Payne's kick. Curry, seven yards deep. And Michigan will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Tom Brady is playing very, very well. His quarterback rating is third right now in the Big Ten. Look at the completion percentage, Gino. He's very efficient, and he's hit the big play at times as well. He's had an outstanding day. He's a senior co-captain. Could be on his way to be an academic All-American this season. Even though both quarterbacks have played well, I think this late in the season, when you're starting to struggle, you have to lean on a senior, and I think Lloyd Carr has got to leave him in there and lean on his senior quarterback. As you saw, Lloyd Carr is going to make Indiana kick it again. The Hoosiers were offside on the kickoff, and Payne will back it up to the 30-yard line. The series between these two schools rather lopsided, and Michigan has won nine in a row, 14 of the last 15. Lloyd Carr challenged his seniors this week. Gino, speaking of, of senior leadership, it's still a, a Michigan team that does not have a lot of seniors. You know, Rich, I think the seniors have to realize and have to put it upon themselves. They've only lost two games. You know, if they win outright the rest of the season, they're 10 and 2. That's a pretty successful season in any college program. So I think they can't fold in their tents and they have to start playing better. That was the feeling last week going into the Illinois game that hey we lost to Michigan State. Many people said poor Illinois going into Ann Arbor and the Illini came out with a stunning win. Curry big hit and down goes Curry at the 22 yard line. Greg Yeldell who played 131 snaps last week against Iowa is a starting safety and he plays on the special teams. The Michigan offense, our Dell starting lineups. It's a pro set and it's an offense that has had trouble running the ball. Though Aaron Shea is a good blocker and a great receiver. 25 catches for the fullback. Marcus Knight, a big play receiver, three consecutive games over 100 yards. Jeff Backus is the junior tackle who's a two-time All Big Ten pick. And Anthony Thomas gets the first carry, and Anthony Thomas is across the 35 to the 36-yard line. He rips off a 13-yard run against an Indiana defense that is absolutely dead last in the conference in yardage and points given up. Their front four, Sean Nelson is playing in the spot of Adewale Agunlia, who was an All-American candidate, lost for the season with a knee injury two weeks ago. Their linebackers, Smith, Schaefer, and Goodman. The secondary has a change. Curtis Randall Ellis at the corner. He's the older brother of the quarterback, Antoine Randall Ellis. And Thomas around the right side is out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Devin Schaefer made the stop, and it looks like Gino so far so good with the broken finger. So far so good, but it's a long game. He takes a couple helmets on that hand. You know, then it gets sore. You wonder how, how tightly or how hard he can grip a football when he's running with it. One thing, though, this Michigan O line, they have a lot of pride, and they've come out those last few plays and just dominated the line of scrimmage. Thomas straight ahead. Thomas is out to the 48 yard line. He's got another first down. There was no mystery to the game plan for Michigan, and the Indiana coaches knew it as well when we talked to him yesterday. They said Michigan will try to run it down our throats. And they have to have good, play, good solid play by their offensive line. They've had it the first few plays here. Michigan's going to look to ride Anthony Thomas just like they did last week. Thomas has carried the ball on every play of this drive, and this time he has stopped. Let's head to the studios and Reese Davis. Reese. Rich Boston College and Syracuse, the winner becomes bowl eligible, very important in the Big East. Opening kickoff, Dewan Daniels, and you've got to be sound in the kicking game, and Daniels is logged on. He is part of the Gone Network. 99 yards to the house, and BC is up 7 0. It would be gone.com. <laughs> no score here. Anthony Thomas with five carries so far, close to midfield. Brady to throw for the first time. Thomas drops it. Incomplete, third down and about 12. 
And Rich, that's where the hand is going to come into play more than him running with the football. He can grip the ball with both hands running early on. But this is a screen pass out to the left hand side. So his farthest hand away from the quarterback is going to be his right hand. That's where the ball is going to hit. It's going to hit his right hand. Look at that. It hits him right in the broken hand. And he drops it. Third down 12. Indiana coming with a blitz. Brady has time and a man wide open. Marcus Knight is to the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 17 yard line. Mike McGrath made the stop. The Hoosiers blitz from the outside and it cost them. They blitz from the outside and the left tackle Ben Mass picks it up. Does an outstanding job. They bring a guy from the corner. There you see the, the tight end get picked up and Knight just coming across the middle on a drag route. No one's covering him. It's a big play for Michigan. Curtis Randall L coming from the corner spot on the blitz. And the Wolverines are inside the 20. On a first and 10. Movement and flags. Prior to the snap, dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Michigan used to be a run at first team. Do you know this year they're a throw at first team? How come? In the Big Ten has generally been a run oriented offense but or run oriented conference but with Drew Brees and Purdue these teams are starting to throw the football more. Walker in motion. Thomas straight ahead. And Indiana stops him. It's a very young Indiana defense. They have just three seniors in their starting 11. Sean Nelson the red shirt freshman playing for Agunlia made the stop. How much do they miss Adewale Agunlia? Well, they miss him tremendously, but as the defensive coordinator, John Haycock last week told us, their starting players played all, over 130 snaps. You can't play that many plays and be consistent defense. That was against Iowa on defense, and most of the defenders are special teamers as well. A quick screen tonight, and he'll race for the sticks. Short of the first down, Sherrod Wallace caught him at the eight-yard line. Third down and very short. And Brady early on is showing he's going tonight. Knight has had three outstanding games. The past three games averaged over 131 yards per game. Those are big, big numbers for a wide receiver. So obviously. Brady is saying, hey, he's my go-to guy. I'm going to throw to him and keep throwing to him. He has three guys that are go-to guys. Knight has been his favorite lately. But David Terrell and Marquise Walker are talented as well. And it's a first down for Thomas. He's inside the five and down to the three-yard line. Justin Smith made the stop for the Hoosiers. Rich, I think one thing you said, why hasn't Michigan been able to run the football as well as they have in the past? They don't have a lot of depth at tailback this year. They have a young Walter Cross behind Thomas. Besides, you have to give these running backs a little breather every so often. Thomas has been the, just the workhorse of this offense, and you tend to wear down late in the season. Thomas, hit. And stopped at the two. A.C. Myler, another redshirt freshman, made the first hit. Two redshirt freshmen, a sophomore and a senior up front for Indiana. Two sophomores and a junior, their linebacking trio. And a pair of sophomores in their defensive backfield. Not a lot of experience. And what that leads to is long drives like we've seen here in the first drive. You got to be able to come up with some turnovers if you're going to give up a lot of long drives like this. Thomas is in. Touchdown, Michigan. I'm sure, sure, Lori Carr this week really challenged both fronts on his football team, his offensive line and his defensive line. Said, "Hey, 
for us to win the rest of our games and have a good season, you guys better start playing better. I'm putting the onus on you to win this football game. Jeff Del Verne for the extra point. It's been a long month for the Wolverines. They lost early to Michigan State, had a week off, lost to Illinois. They'd like to finish October with a W. And right now, Anthony Thomas and the Wolverines are on top. A rather lonely place on a football Saturday. That's to be expected. Number 14, Michigan, their first drive, executing to perfection what Lloyd Carr told us this week. They ran it down the Hoosiers' throats. Hayden Epstein, who has a big right leg, 56 yard field goal a couple weeks ago. Doesn't get much on this one, though. And the Hoosiers will have it at their own 26 yard line. Antoine Randall L., the trigger man, and really the he's the main attraction. He, he runs it, he throws it. His numbers are impressive, whether he's a thrower or a runner. He's the fourth rated passer in the Big Ten, Gino. He's very, very efficient. He'd be a lot better if his receivers would hold on to the ball. They've had a lot of drops, but he is one of the most exciting players in the conference. Whoops, down he goes. The pitch. To the 25, and that play went nowhere. Victor Hobson made the stop of Levron Williams, who, when he touches the ball, averages 8.1 yards per carry. That leads the nation. Versi Gaddis, a dangerous receiver. He leads the Hoosiers with 24 catches and three touchdowns. The offensive line is young at the guard spots. Enoch DeMar and Jamarcus Gorman. A sophomore Gorman is. DeMar is just a redshirt freshman. They've given up, though, only 11 sacks. Gaddis in motion. Randall L. Lots of time. And that, my friends, is what we were talking about. Percy Gaddis flat out dropped that one. Michigan's defense is a 3-4 defense. Rob Renis up front, 35 tackles, but the defensive line sets things up for these linebackers, and they're good. Jones and Hall are both Buckus semifinalists. The secondary suspect, at least that's what their nickname has been, the suspects. Todd Howard struggled against Illinois. Lloyd Carr will keep a close eye on him today. Flag on the play. Gino, what's up? Rich, we had a personal foul roughing the passer call against Michigan so Michigan knows that Randall all he's the key to Indiana's team and their offense so maybe they're going to try to take him out as much as possible they're going to try to hit him this game coaches around the Big Ten will tell you he is one of the toughest players in the Big Ten he takes an awful lot of hits and he keeps on ticking Gaddis in motion Randall L little screen pass Osika lost the football. Michigan's got it. James Whitley stripped it and recovered it. Whitley does an outstanding job getting around his block. If Indiana can block him, it becomes a huge play. You see, they run the fake option and throw back a tight end screen to the left. Whitley gets around the offensive lineman, and you see him just strip the ball. I looked for Indiana to try to do that against Michigan, but hey, Michigan, they're saying, hey, we're going to come out and do everything we can to win this football game today. James Whitley, the junior out of Norfolk, Virginia. Michigan is a very good turnover team. 12th in the nation. They're now plus seven in turnovers. Anthony Thomas. Knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. We head to the studios. Reese Davis. Rich, I know you guys have been impressed with Minnesota's past defense, but this is a different animal. Facing Purdue and Drew Brees. Brees looking around, finds Tim Stratton, rush chairman. Dang glad to score a touchdown. Purdue on top of Minnesota, 7-0. Making Dean Wormer very happy. 7-0 Michigan on top of Indiana. And here, the Wolverines with an opportunity Presented by their defense. Brady with time. And a man open. It's caught. Terrell. 
at the 15 yard line. Tom Brady is having an outstanding season. He's having an outstanding season. Let's take a look at they get in a formation here in Indiana a little bit confused at the start. Brady has got time to throw the football set his feet. Hits, a, hits his receiver on a nice corner route Terrell. Well if he doesn't step out there he's got a shot of maybe going to the house. Just a perfect throw right to the sideline where only Terrell can catch it. Thomas straight ahead. John Haycock, the defensive coordinator for Indiana, told us he wanted to bring heat from the outside. He's done that, Gino, and so far it has cost Indiana. Well, let's take a look what Michigan has to do on offense. They have to average four and a half yards of carry, and they have to attack the Indiana secondary. They're inexperienced. They've struggled this season. If they can do that, they've already done both both of these things today. They're averaging a lot on the on the carry. Paul Mandina, the junior out of Rochester, New York, is down. In attacking the secondary on your keys, that's where Haycock, I think, wanted to bring some of the heat. We saw Juan Randall L and the Hoosiers escaped Iowa City with a seven-point win last week. Michigan on second and seven. Thomas. Big hole. First down. Michigan. Goal to go. Justin Smith made the stop. Rich, what Indiana has to do today, they have to try to limit the big plays. Plays over 10 to 15 yards because Michigan has the talent to create those big plays. And they have to do something to create turnovers. Having over 90 snaps last week as a defense, you have to get some turnovers, get your defense off the field so you can get a rest. On first and goal. Thomas. Hoosier's got him at the five, and he's dropped at the six. Justin Smith, the sophomore linebacker out of Indianapolis, along with Mike McGrath. McGrath and Greg Yeldell, we mentioned it earlier, 131 snaps last week against Iowa. All the defensive snaps, there were 90 of them. And then 41 special team snaps. That's unheard of, Rich. To just put it in perspective, you usually have about 75, 80 snaps as an offense, but these guys had 90. Then they had to play on all the special teams plays. 50 yards so far for Thomas. Outside he goes. And he's knocked out of bounds with a flag down at the three-yard line. It's third down and goal. I got it. But we'll wait on the flag. John Nelson, number 95, one of the tacklers, along with Devin Chaper. Jim Lampatino, our referee today. And this one will back the Wolverines up. Rich, the hold's going to be on David Terrell on the outside. Blocking the corner. There you see his just arm. On, on Curtis Randall L., that's Antoine's brother, just, <laughs> just to take down a nice wrestling move, but not a good block. And the, the big problem with that is Michigan now is second down and long, second and goal from the 13. You know, those are tough ways to convert when you're down inside the goal line. The defense has another defender. That's the back of the end zone. Three penalties already on Michigan. The Wolverines so far, though, in control of the game. Brady. Little screen pass. Shea, the fullback, gets to the 12. Indiana defended it well. Devin Schaefer and Justin Smith, the two linebackers, made the hit. And now, Gino, it's third down and long. And even a tougher situation than second down and long. I thought they may try to go downfield on second down, maybe be a little bit more conservative with their third down pass call. But you see him not be able to pick up a lot of yards with the fullback screen. Now, now you have a decision at a coordinator. Do you go for the end zone or just try to get the ball in the middle of the field and let your field goal kicker kick? A lot of time for Brady. It's Terrell. Terrell still on his feet and hammered at the five-yard line. Johnny Anderson, 
made the stop. Curtis Randall also on the coverage. And the Wolverines will bring on Jeff Del Verne in the field goal unit. They'll have to settle for three points. And a moral victory for the Indiana defense there, Rich. Hoosiers turned it over. Right around their own 40-yard line. Del Verne very accurate. He's the short man. Hayden Epstein is the long bomber in terms of field goal kickers. And that one sneaks its way through. So the Wolverines trying to bounce back, and so far they are. Michigan on top of Camp Cameron's Hoosiers, 10 0. Gary Pine, great. Antoine Randall L. And his Hoosiers, fifth in the Big Ten in total offense. 400 yards a game. Jeremy Johnson in motion. Randall L. standing tall, going deep. Gaddis had a step briefly. But it's over his head and incomplete. Second down and 10. Rich, the offensive coordinator, Pete Smith, and the head coach, Cam Cameron, for Indiana yesterday told us, hey, we're going to try to foot throw the football. We may throw it 35 to 40 times. Really unheard of with a quarterback like Randall well because he is a better runner than thrower, but that is the weakness of this Michigan defense, the secondary. Straight ahead with that one. Let's go down to the field. Don McPherson. Don? Hey, Rich, despite this balmy weather that we're having, the field is a little bit moist, and you've seen a couple of slips so far. Here on the sideline behind the Indiana bench, it is pretty muddy. Hey, Don, I want to get your take on Randall L. Certainly, you're a guy that, that ran some option at Syracuse. Your thoughts on him? Well, he's definitely an electrifying player, as, we, as you mentioned earlier. But the thing that may be a problem is that he is relied on way too much by this offense. Third down and eight. Wow, he overshot the runway there. He was looking for Jerry Dorsey. We're looking for Reese Davis. And you found me, and Wisconsin has found his quarterback. What a spark Brooks Bollinger has been. He's 4 0 as a starter, watching the dance in from the five here. 75 yard drive with the Badgers on top of Northwestern. Ron Dane at 44 of those yards rushing. Dane needs to average 161 yards in his final three games to break Ricky Williams' record. Awful tough in the Big Ten Conference to do that. But Dane has the, has the ability to do it. He's brought himself right back in the Heisman race. Walter Cross is deep. Drew Hagan, the Indiana punter. He had a great day last Saturday and a good one here. Cross to midfield. A good return for Michigan. 17 yards on the return. Michigan on top of Indiana. First quarter and Michigan right now is dominating this football game. With a 10 nothing lead Lloyd Carr's Wolverines have eaten up a lot of clock and eaten up a lot of yards. And they have great field position thanks to that Diallo Johnson punt return. Marcus Knight in motion. Brady. Plenty of time. And he overthrows a wide open Marcus Knight. Second down and 10. Tomorrow at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers head into Detroit to take on the Detroit Lions. 8.15 Eastern tomorrow on ESPN. Then on ABC's Monday Night Football, Mike Holmgren back to Lambeau Field. Back to the frozen tundra, the Seahawks and the Packers. Monday night, 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN on ABC, your exclusive home for primetime NFL football. Huge hole, Anthony Thomas. And actually, Thomas probably should have picked up more than just four yards. He might have cost himself some yards there, making a cut. Instead of running north and south, as coaches say, you know, he ran east and west. 
There you see Thomas just a nice draw play the offensive lineman really playing well early in the football game. It's not the way Indiana had wanted to start this football game. Third down Indiana may have called a timeout. Rich and Cam Cameron said when they played Wisconsin, they had 12 plays and they were down 24 to nothing on offense. And this is what it's turned out to be. Their offense has to start controlling the ball, eating up some yardage, taking some time off the clock, and giving their defense a breather. You know, we saw this Indiana team about a month ago. They were down big to Illinois late. And they came back and won that game in overtime, including that game. They've won three of their last four. But that one loss is really a puzzling one, a 59-0 loss at Wisconsin. And Wisconsin, one of the best teams in the Big Ten, and they came out to play. And that's what you, Michigan, this Michigan team probably has as much talent as anybody in the conference. So as long as they play to their talent, they should beat Indiana, but they haven't been doing that. That's what they're scared of. Look at that. Giving up almost to over 1,200 yards these last two ball games. It doesn't matter what level you're playing. You cannot win football games with your defense giving up yards like that. The amazing thing was they won the Iowa game, and most of those yards were through the air. Against Wisconsin, 465 of them were on the ground. Rich, and you can't really just blame the defense because the offense hasn't done anything to help them out today to go on a long drive take some time off the clock and give them a break. They only have five snaps today. Michigan already has 21 this early in the first quarter. Big third down right here. Indiana has burned a timeout just to regroup defensively. the lone man behind Brady Brady to the sideline it's drops Marquise Walker and it bounced right out and Indiana has held Michigan will punt you see Walker just runs a simple 10 yard out route Brady makes a nice throw quick five steps and throws hits it right on the money Walker thinking about running before catching the ball a high high punt and a fair catch made by Darren Graham lots of college football coming up on ABC today the surprising Illini at home against Leap in LeVar Arrington in Penn State. He made that leap against Illinois last year. North Carolina State against Joe Hamilton at number seven, Georgia Tech. Stanford is in the top 25. They'll take on Washington up in Seattle. Oklahoma against Colorado today at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Check your local listings for the games in your area. You can see them all by ordering ESPN Game Plan on your pay-per-view. ABC Sports, of course, home of the Bowl Championship Series. And the Hoosiers give it to Jeremy Johnson, one of the biggest fullbacks in captivity. He's 5'11", 263. And Indiana trying to run the football inside their tackles. Not a place you want to challenge this Michigan defense. Probably their best player as far as like its consistent play this season has been Rennes, the defensive tackle. So if I if I'm a head coach I want to try to challenge the outside run the option with a guy like Antoine Randall L. Randall L. This one's caught versus Gannis at the 34 yard line. Randall L. Took a pretty good pop. First and 10 Hoosiers. And a super throw by Randall L. Just makes a play action fake come out to his left side. Very tough for a quarterback after making this fake to reposition his feet and get his shoulders back square to the line of scrimmage. Finds Gaddis and Gaddis makes the catch. Here you see 
Randall Isle taking a little lick there right after he gets rid of the ball by Hall. But still, it was complete. And those are the kind of catches that Indiana hasn't been making that, that often this season. The Hoosiers have had to burn another timeout. They have a first down and pretty good field position. But Camp Cameron's team is. Camp Cameron telling the officials the headsets were out on the Indiana sideline. That's why the Hoosiers had to burn a timeout. Not a lot of times you're going to get away with that with, with the officials. They may say, oh, well, you were trying to call the timeout. Shotgun for Randall L. In trouble, lets it go. And it's incomplete. He was sandwiched in the backfield. Dahani Jones made the first hit. So Camp Cameron avoids the usage of a timeout. Now it looks like the headsets are back working. So Michigan can use their headset anytime one either side of the football, their headsets go out. The other team has to pull off their headset and even the playing field. Pete Schmidt on your right. He's the quarterback coach for Indiana. Lloyd Carr's headset's working. Johnson in motion. Levron Williams. First time we've really seen him just take a handoff and go. And the reason Williams is averaging over eight yards a carry is because of the option. People are so leery of getting beat by Antoine Randall L. You see just a simple lead the fullback Jeremy Johnson makes a nice block and LeBron Williams a super run they Indiana needs to start doing that more. Michigan a 10 nothing lead the Wolverines 14th in the country. They started the month at number three in the country. The fullback lost the football. Michigan says they have it. I think Johnson may have gotten it back. He did. See Johnson, the big fullback, just takes the handoff from Randall L, gets it knocked out right as soon as he's positioning the ball to make his run. And fortunately for Indiana, he's able to recover. This Indiana deep offense can't afford to give Michigan anything today. Rob Renus with the forced fumble. Second down. Randall L. Flag goes down. It looks like a hold. And it's unfortunate for Indiana because Randall L gets loose for the first time. A gain of 12. Ian Gold made the stop. This one's coming back. Holding Indiana. And Rich, how good of a player Antoine Randall is and how exciting he is running with the football. It makes for a difficult job blocking for him on the offensive line because sometimes holding on the offense 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul still second down sometimes you're not sure where he's going to be so you you try to block that much better and sometimes you, you end up holding there's probably the hold right there Allows Randall would probably got outside, so disappointing to get a penalty call there. Put him in long yardage. Second and 26. What's in the playbook for Cam Cameron? Randall L. Sort of backs out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Let's head to the studios and Reese Davis. Reese? Rich, you mentioned that magic average of Ron Dane, and uh, Ron Dane needs 161 yards. We'll get to that. We'll get to it now. Ron Dane up the gut, 24 yards, 12 carries, 81 yards so far. Wisconsin on top of Northwestern, 14 nothing. And the little foreshadowing bit that you saw, Purdue and Minnesota, Thomas Hamner. Nine yards out, Hamner looking for a soft spot and finding it. He's been over 100 yards in four straight games. Minnesota back in this thing, 10-7, Purdue's up. 
here Indiana is trying to stay in this one. 10 nothing Michigan lead. A long third down. Randall L. And he gets to the 36 yard line. That's as far as he'll go. Josh Williams made the stop. That holding call obviously helped stop this Indiana drive. Holding call put the Indiana offense in a terrible situation to pick up the first down. But Ian Gold, the linebacker there, he was spying Antoine Randall And his job was just to cover him and not let him break contain and break a big run. Drew Hagan was the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week last week. Had a 50-yarder with his first kick. Diallo Johnson will fair catch that's this one inside the 10. Another great punt by Hagan. Big Ten standings. Obviously, Penn State having a tremendous year. Michigan State and Wisconsin. But look at Indiana and Michigan. Indiana has a half game lead right now over the Wolverines. Minnesota, Ohio State, and Purdue. There are a bunch of teams, Illinois included, that have a shot at a poll. There are nine teams that have a, a real shot at a postseason game in the Big Ten Conference. And that's unheard of in any conference. Big Ten Conference is definitely the best conference in college football this season. Hoosiers look confused on defense. And Anthony Thomas rips off another 10 yard run to the 20. Rich, last week against Illinois, what could go wrong did go wrong for Michigan. They're coming out and trying to right that wrong that they had last week happen to them. And they said, we're going to run the ball with Thomas. Hopefully his finger, his broken hand can hold up. And this thus far through the first first quarter, they've done an outstanding job of it. 66 yards now for Thomas, who had 128 last week until he broke that finger and came out of the game early in the second half against Illinois. He's tackled by Paul Three yard pickup on that first down carry. Paul Mandina, who had left the ball game earlier, good to see him back. The junior out of Rochester made the stop. Indiana really needs to do something to stop Michigan here. They have to stop them on this drive. They'll get pretty decent field position. If they can force Michigan to punt, they can't let Michigan keep driving down the field, keeping time off the clock. Even if Michigan doesn't score, it's a victory to take time off the clock. Aaron Shea left to the backfield, and he'll get it. And the fullback takes it to the 27-yard line. Actually, Evan Coleman the carry the sophomore out of Houston the Wolverines trying to find a way to give Anthony Thomas a rest a very impressive first quarter for Michigan they come into Bloomington and lead the Hoosiers 10 nothing this quarter although with the Wolverines in the middle of a drive and a third down play coming up no change yet Thomas right side Short of the first down, a big play by Curtis Randall. Yeah. And a fourth and a fourth down. Michigan has to punt. Super tackle by Curtis Randall. But Rich, the reason you're not going to put a quarterback in in the middle of a drive, you don't want to put Henson under pressure. He hasn't taken any snaps today in a third and five situation. You don't want to put him in in that situation. You want to put him in a first down and let him work the whole drive. Hayden Epstein is doing the punting for Michigan in a low line drive that Darren Graham has. Graham is outside. Whoops. Down he goes to the 38 yard line. Yard Bill Seymour made the stop. Don McPherson, what's up? Hey, Rich, when we talked to the Michigan coaches, they talked about the problems up front with the offensive line. They also talked about combo blocking, guards and tackles and center and guard blocking. What they've done in the first drive is just go, come out and play power football. And after that first drive, when they scored the touchdown, you got the sense on the sideline, that's what they want to do, play power football. But after that last stop, you have to give credit to Indiana. Indiana with a football right now. trickery Randall L going deep Gaddis is interfered with there's no flag what's going on oh my goodness 
goodness. Rich, Indiana did exactly what they wanted to there. Attacked the Michigan secondary, their weakness. But I think the officials were watching Jerry Dorsey because he was the deepest receiver, and then Gaddis came out of nowhere Whoa. and ends up getting hit. But Gaddis is the one that's going to be able to catch the football. There you see Dorsey. He's the deep guy. Gaddis comes out of nowhere. Wow, how don't they call that? Brandon Williams with the with the uh, the contact before the ball gets there. It's a huge break for Michigan. Randall on the option. And the pitch to LeBron Williams. Don McPherson down below. Did you see that play? Well, I tell you, he had two guys in the area. He had Gaddis and Dorsey both in the area. That ball is catchable for both of those guys. That is a horrible no call. It almost looked, Don, like Dorsey just ran away from it and got out of the way of Gaddis to catch the ball, did he? Uh -huh. Dorsey saw Gaddis underneath, and you're right. He just kind of went absolutely straight vertical and stayed out of the way. Just a, an amazing no call. Wow. Third down and 11. That is. <laughs> Randall L to the sidelines. His receiver slipped and he overthrew Darren Graham. And the fans here in Bloomington still upset on that no call. Oh, it's a huge no call. Puts Indiana at least in field goal position to get the, get them on the scoreboard. That's big, big, big call. You know, Rich, I don't know what they did to the field, if they watered it more. I know we hear stories where where teams will grow the grass extra to slow the other teams down. I don't know. Maybe Indiana wanted the field to be wet like this. The Hoosiers have not helped themselves. They've been disorganized at times on both sides of the ball. Prior to the snap, dead ball, ball start, offense. A pass interference call, Gino, would have put the football into Michigan territory right across midfield. And Camp Cameron, you know, coaches, I've seen coaches get angry. I think Cameron was more in the state of disbelief and shock than he was. And I'm right there with them. Good punt by Hagan. Johnson. Diallo Johnson. Flag goes down. Johnson is gone. Two flags are down. Diallo Johnson into the end zone. Two flags set at the 32 and the 37. Coming back. Rich, for Indiana to have a shot going forward to this ball game, they have to start playing mistake free football. Legal block in the back on the receivers. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Couple of calls that had a big bearing on this one. Indiana trying to hang in. Michigan on top, 10 nothing. Back. Excuse me, right there. Block in the back, and then here is the second penalty. The same play, the holding call by Michigan. On the return. Wipes out a long touchdown return. This throw is incomplete. Another slip. David Terrell fell on that pattern. Both teams have had an awful time staying on their feet. Drew Henson is still on the sideline, Gino. How come? I don't. I, I'm trying to figure it out why the field's wet and why Drew Henson isn't playing. This is the second quarter. It's his quarter. But maybe it isn't just the second quarter. Maybe Lloyd Carr says, "Okay, Brady, you're going to play four series or five series." And then Henson's going to have a chance to play. So maybe he just wants him to get a certain amount of uh, snaps before Henson comes in. It has not rained in Bloomington all week long. A train. Anthony Thomas to the 35, and out of bounds he goes. We head to the studios, Reese Davis. Reese. 
All right, guys, while you're enjoying the best running quarterback in the Big Ten, here's probably the second best. Ohio State's Steve Belisari on the quarterback draw goes in. 18 yards down on Iowa, up 14 8, and then Belisari did it with his feet, and he does it to the Hawkeyes with his arm, finding Kevin Hauser from three yards out. Buckeyes in control, 21 8. Thanks, Reese. 71 yards now for Anthony Thomas. Tom Brady going deep. Knight incomplete. Marcus Knight covered by Sherrod Wallace. What was that, Rick? You're about to say nice catch. Pretty good defensive play there. Almost. Brady goes deep tonight down the sidelines. He's going after. He's had three state straight 100-yard receiving games. Puts some nice air under the ball and lets Knight run under it. But Sherrod Wallace able to knock the ball out at the last minute and not give up the completion. Second down and 10. Wolverines keep it on the ground to the 41-yard line. Anthony Thomas on the carry. This is what the Indiana defense wanted, third down and longs. Well, I think any defense wants third and long because it puts you in a situation where you have to throw the football. So that means the defensive line is going to rush a little harder, try to sack the quarterback. The secondary knows the ball is going to be in the air, maybe have a little tighter coverage. Brady, quick throw, caught by Marquise Walker. He's out to midfield and he's got the first down. Maurice Tucker made the hit. Walker is just a sophomore out of Syracuse. And he's an up-and-comer, 25 catches. He had his first touchdown last week against Illinois. Rich, these are plays a defensive coordinator hates to see on third and long. You throw a short three or four yard hitch. Defender misses the first tackle. Would have been a fourth down. Walker able to juke for a few more yards and pick up the first down. And keep the drive alive for Michigan. Thomas. Indiana all of a sudden is doing a pretty good job on that play. Randall L made a great play on the last drive. This time Jason Zapp, the senior out of Indianapolis, made the stop. Okay. The Indiana defense has got to start playing better. You see. Last in the Big Ten, total yards, scoring, pass efficiency. Offense wins games, but defense wins championships, and they have to shore up this defense for them to start playing better this season and in the future. Now, is that the, the mantra you preached at Miami? Oh, definitely. We won national championships, but we always had an outstanding defense. At second and ten. Brady just dumps it off. It's a good thing Brady threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Had he thrown past the line of scrimmage, it would have been a flag because Michigan had linemen downfield. That's a heads up throw by a senior. Look at the lineman downfield. If you know if he throws that across the line of scrimmage, that's a penalty. And you see that often is any time a screen play is covered and the quarterback tries to end up throwing to his outlet down the field, you'll get an illegal receiver downfield. One of the offensive linemen is already downfield blocking for the screen. Another third down and long. Indiana shows blitz. They only come with three, but it's enough. Brady. Deflected and incomplete. Johnny Anderson got a hand on it. They only bring three the Indiana defense, but Jason Zapp able to get to Brady. Brady, a big, big, strong pocket quarterback, but has the mobility to shake off the tackle on the first defender, get outside, trying to find his receiver. But Johnny Anderson does an outstanding job. This kick goes into the end zone. A 50-yarder from Hayden Epstein. Michigan still in control right now, 10-0 on top of Indiana. They've had a couple today. These are so frustrating for a quarterback. Randwell makes a nice play to break contain, finds his tight end, Osika. 
God, you have to start catching those footballs. Indiana can't afford to keep dropping the footballs today. On second down, the Hoosiers give it to Dwayne Hogan. We head to the studios. Reese Davis. Reese? Rich, the Longhorns vowed there would be no Nebraska hangover in Ames, taking on Iowa State. Chris Robertson blasting in from the one, and the 12th ranked Longhorns on top of the Cyclones, 7 0. All right, thanks, Reese. I'm not sure what the costume is. Do you know some help? <laughs> I'm not really sure either. <laughs> is it supposed to be the Grim Reaper or something? He was dressed as the Hoosier defense. Mandalel has his man, Gaddis. But Gaddis on third down is kept short of the 30-yard line. Victor Hobson made the stop. Rich, and that's a sign of an inexperienced offense. Gaddis on third and eight. You have to be, go to the first down, pass the first down, so you, when you catch that ball, it's a first down. You can't expect to be able to pick up a few yards after the catch, especially on a curl route that he just ran. Remember, Diallo Johnson took one back for an apparent touchdown, his last return. Two penalties, though, on the return. Brought it back. This one is blocked. It goes right back to Hagan, the punter. And Hagan is around the 30. He's got the first down. How about that? Rich, that may be the spark that Indiana needs to start getting something going. Maybe they'll start getting excited that they're playing Michigan and only down by 10 points. What a heads up play by the punter Hagan. You see the, the snap, a good snap, just has the ball taken right off his foot, but bounces right back in Hagan's lap and a good enough athlete to run around the corner. I was almost say, kick it, kick it from up here and say, get rid of the ball, but he ends up picking up the first down. You're right, I guess you could kick it again, huh? Why not? <laughs> Make it be like rugby. Anthony Jordan was the Wolverine who blocked the punt, but he blocked it right back to Hagen. He's going to get another little uh, mark on his helmet there, too, you know. He was picking up the first down. He was Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week last week. Randall L. in trouble, throwing on the run. What a throw! Gaddis couldn't hold it at midfield. And it will be second down and 10. See a good snap to Hagen. And Jordan just breaks through the line of scrimmage. The ball back, bounces right up to him. There's where, right in there, I thought maybe he'll just try to kick it off the side of his foot, but able to pick up four or five yards and pick up the first down. Hagen, that might be his first and last first down he'll ever pick up. That is the first block kick that Indiana has had this year. Hogan in motion. LeBron Williams smothered at the 30-yard line. James Hall, a big member of that really talented linebacking quartet of James Hall, Dehondi Jones, Ian Gold, and Grady Brooks. Victor Hobson's playing there as well today. Rich, and they're in another third long situation. I, and I know I've been harping on dropping the football, but Gannis could have made a tough catch on first down to pick up eight or nine yards. Randall is making the plays and putting the balls in position for guys to catch it. They have to start helping him out. That one was not a good throw. And Randall L is fortunate. Larry Foote didn't take it back. Foote, the sophomore linebacker out of Detroit. And the reason second pick of the year. And why? Because they had an extra man in coverage. They only rushed three guys. That means there's eight guys gonna be underneath. And there you see Foote is the is the defensive player that didn't rush the quarterback. Is back, Drew Hagan. Michigan got another one. Cato June blocked it. Rich, we talked about how much better Indiana has.
has to start playing to get back in this ball game. Well, they cannot afford to have any mistakes, offense, defense, and especially special teams. The second block kick in as many attempts, and this one isn't bouncing right back to Hagan. Here you see Kato June just breaking through from the right hand line and just pulling the ball right off his foot. Anthony Thomas. And that's what usually happens when it rains, it pours. You usually see a turnover and a big play the very ne next snap because the other team, Michigan, is going to go for the throat anytime they get a quick turnover like that. If the, if they had ball in midfield, maybe go for a deep pass. There you see Thomas just around the right side of the of the offense. Extra point good. Number 14, Michigan, is in control of this one. A big play on the special teams. And Anthony Thomas, his 10th rushing touchdown. A lot of who's your moms and who's your daddies on campus. It's Parents' Day here in Bloomington. 17 nothing, Michigan on top. And that one rolls to the end zone. Gino, that last run, Indiana has looked unorganized at times defensively. And they may be getting the, the call in late from the secondary. Look at the whole defense. Michigan is ready at the line of scrimmage and set their position. They know what play they're going to run. The defense can't afford to be worried about where they're lining up after the offense is set. They have to be ready to go before the offense. And it puts them in a bad situation. And there you see Thomas is able to get around the right-hand side. John McPherson, what's going on on the sidelines right now? What's the mood down on the Indiana side? Well, the Indiana side is a little frustrated. On the Michigan sideline, they were victimized. I felt they were victimized by big plays. Those two block punts really charged their bench. Randall L. That one is caught. Out to the 45-yard line, Lebron Williams makes the catch. Hey, Don, a lot of people would ask, now, Randall L. is a great runner. Can he bring them back through the air now? Well, you know, a couple weeks ago against Illinois, we saw him do that, bring them back with his arm. I think in this game, he is going to have to do that, but it's not Randall L. It's his supporting cast. They have dropped balls, they have fumbled the ball, and they have dropped passes that were right in their hands. On first and ten, he'll tuck it under. I'll ask both of you guys this, Gino and, and Don. How does a quarterback deal with drop balls? Well, they're frustrating, but you have to move on. And the, the, as a quarterback, all you want to do is put the ball in a situ, in a position where your wide receiver, tight end, running back has an opportunity to catch it. Hey, they're on scholarship too, and they have to start making up play, making plays, and pick up Randall L. And, and when you're a guy who's getting hit as much as Randall L. is, and being required to do so much, it does get frustrating. But his coaches say that he's just like a basketball player. He wants to know what the next play is. He is a basketball player here at, at Indiana. He's a player for Bobby Knight. That throw is right on the money. And I don't think Percy Gaddis could help but catch that one. That hit him right on the two. First down, Indiana. College football tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. Number one, Florida State taking on Virginia. That's at 7 Eastern. Then the Hokies. I think this is a big game for them against Pittsburgh. Number three, Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh at 7 Eastern. Four Pacific, that's on ESPN2 tonight. LeBron Williams, the 38-yard line. Ian Gold made the stop. That was an interesting play, Rich. I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't know if Don has ever ran that play. They come out, Antoine Randall up. Looks like they're going to run the option to the right, just reverses field and turns right around. Here you see, he comes right out and then, whoops, turns right around and hopes the Michigan defense falls for it. This one is incomplete. Underthrown, 
to the studios, Reese Davis. Reese? Rich, you might remember last year, T. Martin hit 23 consecutive passes against South Carolina, getting it done again. This time, Ontario Smith, 24-yard touchdown. The Gamecocks have lost 18 in a row, and it looks as if it's on its way to 19. 7-0 early. And Texas and Iowa State. Cyclone scored a touchdown in his Haywood from two yards out. Very fortunate. Replay showed he fumbled before he crossed the plane. Next race, 7-7 there. 17-0 here. Michigan on top of Indiana. But the Hoosiers are showing some life. Whoa! Randall L. Osika holds on. And he's down to the 12-yard line. Tommy Hendricks made the stop. It was Chris Dealman who made the catch. And Rich, this is how this ball game should be going the whole time for Indiana. All they need is their tight ends, wide receivers, and running backs to start making a few more catches. Randall L does a good job stepping up into the pocket, using his feet, throws a little touch pass, finds Osika coming across the middle, able to hold on to it and make a solid play for the Indiana offense. And the Hoosier offense now at the 12. Hogan straight ahead. And Hogan is inside the 10 to the seven yard line. Second down and about six. Dwayne Hogan, the junior fullback out of Indianapolis. Cam Cameron spent three years on North Turner's staff with the Washington Redskins. This is his third year here in Bloomington. Rich, and I'm interested to see if Indiana can cap this drive off with a touchdown. Do those ghosts from last week versus Illinois, do they start creeping back in the defense's game plan? Randall L to the end zone. Dealman got it. Touchdown. Chris Dealman. Randall has been doing it all game, and now his supporting cast, like Don and I said, they're starting to step up and make plays. They will go right down the field, and Randall is a good enough thrower where he's putting the ball in the right spot. Now let's see how Michigan can react to that drive. Andy Payne for the extra point. He got it, even though it was partially blocked. Someone got a hand on it. The Hoosiers are trying to wake up those ghosts. Gino Toretta, Antoine Randall L to Chris Dealman. And Indiana is on the board. Just three catches this year, but two catches, two big ones on that drive. Tate Stancy on the return. Let's go down below. Don McPherson. Don. Well, Rich, Randall Elk could not have thrown that ball any better. Deal was at the back of the end zone, two guys in front of him. On the sideline right now, the offense really believes that they can get something going. They're talking right now about doing more of what they did in that last drive, really moving Randall Elk around and spreading the ball around. The real test now, Don and Gino, is the Indiana defense and stopping that man, Anthony Thomas. Randall L. continues to roll up big numbers. His numbers on the ground and in the air. He's one away from the Indiana record. Steve Bradley back in 83. Matt, I don't think that shit says the whole picture because he's got 12 rushing also, you know, so he, he counts for he is this Indiana offense. Good play action by Brady. He's going to keep it. And he's right at midfield. Hey, both of you quarterbacks, how come we haven't seen Drew Henson? Is this the game that Lloyd Carr finally says we're sticking with Brady? Like I said early in the game, I think you go to your seniors and you have to need leadership to rally the troops. Maybe he's saying, hey, I'm going to stick with Brady. 
and and let's see how our team reacts to a loss. I agree with it. Thomas over the right side stopped for a two yard gain. Don McPherson your thoughts on this two quarterback situation. You know Rich I, I agree with Gino. I don't think that Michigan really other than the first drive has gotten into a groove and I think if they don't get in a groove I think they'll leave Brady in there and uh, I don't I don't see the need to bring in Henson at this point. Something that Lloyd Carr has been consistent on throughout the season. Thomas right side. Nowhere to go and all of a sudden the Indiana defense is stiffening. Rich I think going back to the quarterback situation Drew Henson hasn't done anything that Tom Brady has done this season. So to me you leave the quarterback the senior quarterback and co-captain in the ball game and let him play because he has as good if not better stats than Drew Henson. The Michigan coaches told us this week that Henson would play in the second quarter. Third down. Blitz coming. Brady escapes. Incomplete. Marcus Knight, the intended receiver. And Antoine Randall L is going to get the football back. And the defensive coordinator, Heacock, this is what he said he needed to do. He needed to bring pressure from the outside. Johnny Anderson came on a secondary blitz there. Gets Brady out of the pocket. Brady is not the runner that Antoine Randall L is, not able to complete the pass. Epstein's kick checks up nicely. And Michigan will down it inside the five-yard line. Quickly to the studios, Reese Davis. And Rich, coming up on the halftime report, we'll have a last week. They had a stellar 31 points in the last 17 minutes of the football game. It went 31-28. If you're Indiana right now, do you just try to run clock out? Michigan moves. And the Hoosiers snap the ball. Chad Miller, the senior center, I think trying to get the penalty. Definitely. As soon as he sees one of the defenders in the zone, Prior to the he snaps the ball. Then ball. ball. Offside. Two minutes left, Defense. Gino. Five Indiana has two timeouts left. Are they conservative here? Well, I think you're conservative, but what that does, it takes you out of a out of a bad situation, moves you up to the 10-yard line. I don't think you can be conservative down 10 with two minutes to play. All right. I didn't say you can be aggressive, but you're not going to be that conservative. <laughs> Randall L will pitch it. LeBron Williams outside and out to the 19-yard line. There's more breathing room. First down, clock stops. Now I'm going out on a limb. They, they've become more aggressive. Once you're to the 20, become more aggressive. The clock will start once they move the chains. Randall L trying to move the troops along. Johnson breaks out across the 30. He's got a first down. Dwayne Patman made the stop. Clock stops. They move the chains. Well, I thought I, I really got to think they got to start being more aggressive. Either call a timeout here because you're losing valuable valuable time. They lost 10 seconds before the last snap after the first snap, and they're going to lose at least that again on this snap. Tight end set. Johnson again. And on first and ten from the 30, they go nowhere. And the clock continues to run. Now you're in a situation they're probably just gonna let it run out. And with with the way they've been playing that last drive, I think you have a little bit of momentum momentum if you're Indiana. Use it to your advantage and come out and try to do the same thing you did on the last drive. Whoa, Randall L. To 
the 34 yard line. And the Hoosiers now with a third down. Michigan, I think, may take a timeout. And some of the fans getting a little uneasy with the play call. You know, I kind of, I kind of agree with them. I'd like to see it be more aggressive. I think the fans think, hey, you're playing Michigan, you have nothing to lose. Go out there, be more aggressive, because your quarterback is one of the most exciting and best players in the country. Tomorrow at three Eastern on ESPN, the Cart FedEx Championship Series wraps up its 21st year. The Marlboro 500 live from the California Speedway. Dario Franchitti, Juan Montoya. Our neck and neck for the PPG Cup, one million dollar cash bonus. Log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. That would be a Lee Corso pumpkin. Lee Corso's presence is still felt here, and not <laughs> not just in a spiritual kind of Halloween way. You a halftime report is coming up shortly with Reese Davis and John McAvitt. Cam Cameron had his old coach Lee Corso into town for the big reunion of that 1979 Holiday Bowl team. The night that Indiana beat Illinois. And Cameron said it was one of the most emotional speeches and moving speeches he'd ever heard. And Corso addressed his old team. Randall L, look out. It's completed. Jerry Dorsey, he's out of bounds. And now, Gino, the wasted 30 to 40 seconds really hurts. At least. I think it was a wasted minute or like closer to a minute. Now you only have 17 seconds left with two timeouts. You're looking at probably in the neighborhood of maybe three to four more plays before, if you don't get a touchdown, before you can get the field goal unit on the field. Indiana has two timeouts left. Whether they have enough time to use them both, we'll have to wait and see. Randall L. over the middle. Caught! First down, Hoosiers! Jerry Dorsey! Maybe we're wrong, Rich. They come out with some, some huge plays, but now you're, you're 10 seconds. It's very tough. You're inside the 10 yard line. It's very tough when you get in these situations to be able to score because the defense has, you've got to think they have an extra defender. They have the back of the end zone to use to their, their benefit covering Indiana. Randall L. Back of the end zone, incomplete. Dealman couldn't hold that one. It was too tall for him. Five seconds left. Would have been a great catch by Dealman, but Randall Elf makes another nice throw. Throws it with touch over everybody but his man. Now you see Dealman crossing the back of the end zone. Just, just barely. Cam Cameron does not want to gamble with five seconds. His field goal unit is on. Andy Payne. Trying to bring the Hoosiers within seven. He does. And Indiana salvages three points at the end of the first half. How about that for Cam Cameron and the Hoosiers? Off the canvas and down by seven. Number 14, Michigan on top at halftime. Let's go to the studios. Reese Davis and the coach, John McAvoy. They had a couple of big plays. Michigan called a timeout, feeling they could get the ball back. And then Indiana hit a, a couple of long passes and put themselves inside the 10 and then had to settle for a field goal. Darren Graham at the 10 yard line. Down to the sidelines, Don McPherson. Don? Hey, Gino, you're exactly right. Coach Lloyd Carr on the Michigan bench is very happy with the play of his special teams. What he's not happy with is the protection for Tom Brady. That could mean that Tom Brady will stay in the game until they get, get, get that corrected. On this sideline, uh, 
coach really wanted to do exactly what they did at the end of the first half. He was very happy with, ha with what happened at the end of the first half. He said they're going to continue to do that. They need to hold on to the football a little bit better. And Indiana's offense gets the first call. There's a look at Brady. Two very different quarters of football in the first half. A dominant Michigan performance and then the comeback by Indiana. Randall L is on the move. What else is new? Trying to get out of bounds, he does. He'll pick up maybe a couple of yards. Eric Wilson and Ian Gold giving chase. Richard, in, like Don McPherson said, Indiana just has to build on what they did. They were able to make some big plays. They were in the same positions in the first quarter. A few drop passes killed their drives. Come on up. Hoosier took a long time getting that play in from the sideline. Quarterback draw, he lost the ball, but Indiana gets it back. Rich and all Indiana did, they ran the same motion that they did the play before. Michigan checked into a two deep coverage, so that means they're they're looking for the pass. Indiana runs the same play the next time, tries to run the quarterback draw. Randall just keep can't keep a handle on the football. Third down and 12. Draw play, LeBron Williams has the first down to the 31 yard line. That's a big call. Ian Gold made the stop. Big call kept caught in uh, Michigan defense off guard but LeBron Williams I really like this kid he's big he's got speed he has the moves averaging over eight yards a carry I tell you what I may be throwing the ball to him more and giving him more opportunities running the football Randall L quick throw and it's caught a sliding catch by LeBron Williams, the tailback. Camp Cameron told us that this guy could play for Bobby Knight in the Hoosier basketball team, and he's a great high school player. In fact, Knight has, has extended an open invitation just in case Williams wants to come out. Knight will be expecting number 11 to report as soon as football season is over. Antoine Randall L., one of Knight's point guards. Side handoff to Williams. He's across the 35, out to the 36. James Hall made the stop. Rich, I think that was a little changeup for the uh, Indiana. I think they handed off to Johnson, the big fullback, trying to catch Michigan a little bit off guard, maybe power forward for a few yards, get it in a third and short situation as opposed to his third down and six. Michigan had a 17-0 lead in the ball game. On third and five, here comes a blitz. Randall L. Quick throw, caught, but not enough for the first down. That was Williams with the catch, and boy, was that James Hall with a big hit. Michigan blitzes, try to get some pressure on Randall L. He steps up in the pocket, makes a throw over the defender, but Hall able to hit LeBron Williams before he has a chance to pick up the first down. Michigan has blocked two punts today. Hagan almost had that one blocked. And the return is out to the 18-yard line. Diallo Johnson on the return. 
Wow, Hagan, who had one block right back to him, which he took for a first down. Another one set up a Michigan score. This one narrowly avoided another block. Michigan on top of Indiana. First possession for Michigan in the second half. Tom Brady has gone the distance for the Wolverines, and that's a story in itself. Straight ahead goes Thomas. Sean Nelson, the redshirt freshman, made the stop. Drew Henson was scheduled to pitch in the second quarter of this one. They are and I agree with Don McPherson, like you said earlier. They, Michigan just hasn't gotten a groove. They were up 17 nothing, but they're not grooving as an offense. So I don't think a change of quarterback would help any. Brady drops. Marcus Knight had it go right through his mitts. Fourth drop of the day for Michigan. And that's just running, thinking about running before you catch the football. Knight, the ball goes right through his hands. Brady makes a nice throw. And Knight thinking about turning and getting upfield with it before he makes the catch. This Indiana crowd trying to become a factor on third and nine. Brady, all the time in the world. Incomplete. David Terrell, the intended receiver. We go to the studios. Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Rich Purdue and Minnesota. The Boilermakers have been very balanced. Montrell Lowe going in for the touchdown here. 32 rushes, 28 pass plays. It's 19-7 late in the third quarter of that game in Ohio State on top of Iowa, 28 to 11. Although your guy Mullen, 22 to 29. That's right, he is my guy. He played great last week, Scott Mullen, young quarterback for Iowa. Right now, the Indiana Hoosiers are in this football game. The crowd is getting into it. They're down seven to number 14, Michigan. Don't go anywhere. That's Antoine Randall out. Cam Cameron's offense is an interesting hybrid of a, of a passing attack, a pro-passing attack, and that option that Randall L. runs so well. When they run shotgun and he drops back, he's very dangerous. And if he doesn't find anybody, he's going to run with the ball. And he can pick up 10, 20, maybe even 50 yards with a scramble. He's shown he has that ability. And all that was was a delayed blitz by Gold. Michigan is starting to bring these blitzes to confuse Randall L. You see Gold just on the delay around the corner. The offensive line doesn't see it because he doesn't blitz right away. So they're thinking, hey, this guy's not coming. We're not going to account for him. Then he comes late, and he has the speed to de delay a blitz like that and able to get to Randall L. That's as clean a shot as Michigan has had on Randall L. today. And you have to be a fast linebacker to get to the quarterback if you delay like that before blitzing. Randall Ellis called the timeout. I don't know if it's to get the play in or just to collect his thoughts after that collision with the senior Ian Gold. The numbers are, are striking. Say hi to Lindsay. That Say is hi to Lindsay. Tiny Elvis. Actually, that's Lindsay Carter making his national television debut and his mom Christy <laughs> very proud papa in the truck Brian Carter our producer Elvis is in the house I think Brian bought that outfit in Memphis <laughs> when we were doing the Liberty Bowl last year Work, Sarge. Third down now. Randall L. Stepping up. Throwing. Dealman pays for it and it's incomplete. 
Not a bad throw. It was a difficult catch. Dwayne Patman made sure that Dealman couldn't squeeze it. And what Michigan's doing, Michigan in long yardage situations, they're only rushing three guys. And Jones, you see one of the linebackers is always covering. Antoine Randall, Randall able to step up, doesn't have the room to run, makes a nice throw, and Gilman just can't hang on to it. Anthony Jordan came close to that last punt. Oh, and he almost got, they almost got that one. Was it touched? I don't think so. Indiana falls on it, and it's Michigan's ball. The fans here thought it was touched. But the Hoosiers will have to settle for terrible field position for Michigan. Gino, what's going on with this Indiana punting game? They need to shore up the middle of this punt block. They're, they're just not blocking the Michigan defenders because the, the, the snap is good. Hagan's getting the ball. He's not taking a lot of time. But Jordan's broke through the line of scrimmage three or four times. Obviously, from that angle, it's tough to tell whether he touched it. He did not react as if he did and go back to get the ball. And Michigan on first down with the A train over the right side. Both defenses look like they're the ones that made the proper adjustments at halftime. And Indiana made the adjustments after the first quarter. They've really been playing well this quarter and a half. But the offense hasn't been able to capitalize in the second half thus far. Brady to the sidelines. Caught. Is he out of bounds? Now oh, they'll say he's inbounds. David Terrell with a fine catch along the sidelines. One foot and the one foot rule in college you need two foot two feet down in the pros only one in college there you see Terrell gets the one foot down and makes the catch Ooh, that's awful close I don't know if he had possession of the ball as that foot was down on first and ten Tom Brady throws it to the sidelines and it's incomplete to the studios, Reese Davis. Reese. Rich, Wisconsin and Northwestern. Wildcats on the move. Zach Kustak firing and he finds Jamar Fletcher and Fine DB is headed the other way. Jamar turning on the jet. Now he's going to cross field and now Jamar's getting a little bit tired. At this point, John Makovich screaming, just lie down, get Ron Dane some yardage. But he won't get any carry. 93 yards, Wisconsin up big. Anthony Thomas over the left side to the 30 yard line on that second down carry. It brings up third down and short. O.J. Spencer made the stop for Indiana. Michigan's offense just a shade under five yards of play. That's very good. I, I thought they needed to average about four and a half yards of carry and per play going into this ball game to end up beating Indiana. They've done well, but they haven't capitalized. When they've been in situations to score, they haven't put the points on the board. Third down and three. Thomas gets outside, has the first down to the 38-yard line. Rich, and one thing I think, the longer Michigan allows Indiana to hang around in this ball game and be close. I'm sure they're going to be the coaches on the Indiana sidelines going to say, "Hey, Illinois came back from 21 points down. They're going to try. To, they're going to say, "Hey, they did it last week." There you see Thomas got some spectacular numbers. He's been the workhorse for the offenses today. He had 128 yards last week as well when he broke his finger and came out of the ball game. Aside from that one drop, the finger doesn't seem to be bothering him much today. Terrell on the reverse. Terrell to the 47-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Paul Mandina made the stop.
Rich, what do you think about the quarterback situation? Oh, he's Are just you surprised or no. But something just occurred to me. If Michigan's offense doesn't capitalize on a few more of these opportunities, does then Lloyd Carr make the move out of necessity, not out of design? Just something to think about. To the 45 yard line. Though I agree with you, I think Brady has played well. He's had four balls dropped. He's made most of the throws he's needed to make. And both of these quarterbacks, Antoine Randall and Tom Brady, are just getting some drop passes by their receivers. And some of them would be tough catches, but some of them are catches that the receivers should be making. They're just thinking about running before they have the football. You saw Thomas slip on that play. The, the footing today on a 70 degree day has been suspect at best on third down. Brady. Sideline pattern Terrell. He's right on the sticks and he falls forward with what looks like another first down. You just get in a third medium situation and you have the talent that Michigan has at wide receiver. You're just the defenders have to have to honor the speed on the outside. Just a quick three step drop by Brady and a simple hitch route. And there's another Terrell slipping there too. A lot of turf we've seen come up. Brady, Terrell broken up. Great play by Maurice Tucker. That had six points written all over it. And that's a throw. You want to put a little bit more air under under it and let your receiver run through it. Brady tries to drive the ball in with his arm. And the defender able to, Maurice Tucker able to make a super play on it. That's a ball where I would rather see the quarterback Brady throw the ball up in the air a little higher, let his receiver run under it. Second down and ten. Aaron Shea, the big fullback, has bounced out of bounds at the 40. We've seen turf come up, guys slip all day. Don McPherson, what's going on down there? Hey, Rich, well, they say that it hasn't rained here in quite some time in Bloomington, but this is a piece of the turf that's been coming up all day long. This does not look like turf that has not been rained on. It's very moist at the bottom, very moist at the base. We've seen a number of slips, and this is the reason why. I don't know if you'll get a groundskeeper to confess, Don, but do you think that's by design? Do you think... Indiana watered the field down. Well, Rich, when I went to ask about what the, about the condition of the field, I felt like an IRS auditor. No one wanted to talk to me. Everyone ran away from me. <laughs> Believe me, folks, that doesn't often happen with Johnny Mac. Fumble. Michigan, I think, has it back. On third and short, they may get the ball back, but I think the fumble may have cost them the first down, depending on where they spot the football. I think Thomas had the first down initially and the ball rolled back across the the spot. Let's see what Michigan does here. Wow, Michigan's gonna punt the ball. I think in the past, this is a situation where Michigan goes, hey, if this is Indiana we're playing. We're gonna go for it, we're gonna get the first down here. Not too sure of the offense that they can pick it up. Aiden Epstein is going to kick it. Fair catch. Boy, and in the exchange rate, what a great sequence for Indiana. Derek Graham makes the fair catch. And the Hoosiers come out smelling pretty good on that one. And they're thinking that's a big stop. Third and one, third, not even third and one, third and six inches. They stopped Michigan, put the ball back in Antoine Randall's hands. Randall on the pitch to Williams. A pickup of about 10 yards. We head to the studios. Reese Davis. Reese. Rich, I've been holding off and holding off and holding off, but Toretta's got a problem. West Virginia and Miami. Avon Coburn going in from the five, and the Mountaineers on top 20 to 7 as they play late in the third down in Miami. And Boston College and Syracuse, the winners bowl eligible. We've mentioned that. BC's on top by one at the dome. Along with quarterbacks Gino Toretta and Don McPherson, whose two teams were just highlighted in that last scoring package. And both of your teams, gentlemen, are getting beat. Gino, yours much worse than Don's. 
<laughs> well, you threw throw another jab at me like last week when we were losing 28 nothing. Maybe we'll maybe we'll come turn it around and come back. <laughs> they have definitely been struggling early in the uh, in these ball games. Miami has. You know what the problem in the Carrier Dome is, you know, the, the Carrier Dome surface this time of year is very, very slick. So it makes running that option very difficult. It's inside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but it's, it's still uh, very slick. Really? Does it? It's, with it's, the weather? It's the early morning dew. Yes, it's, it's when it snows in Syracuse this time of year, indoor surfaces have a tendency to get slick. Are people, you serious people, or are you joking? I'm joking, Gino. <laughs> you almost had me there for a minute. I thought it was April Fool's Day. Four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Jeremy Johnson to the 35. James Hall made the stop as Indiana tries to pick up that short yarded situation and it looks like they have. Randall held the pitch to Johnson. Or rather to Williams. And Williams is across the 40. Gain of five. And suddenly the Indiana offense is clicking a little bit. And they're really mixing it up. As the first half, they really wanted to throw the ball almost every down. The second half, they've come out, run the option with some success, had a few passing plays, had some success throwing the ball with Randall L. Really keeping the Michigan defense off balance. And like I said, the longer you let these guys hang around, the more they think they can beat Michigan. That play was blown up early, but somehow Jeremy Johnson stayed on his feet. It will bring up a third down and about four. And Jeremy Johnson, probably one of the biggest running backs in the country right now, Richard. 5'11, about 270. But Coach Cameron says he has the best hands on the team. And he's a super fullback. Movement and flags. Prior to snap, dead ball, ball start, offense, offense. five yard penalty. Coming up Thursday on ESPN. The boys are headed to Starkville. Kentucky going there as well to take on number eight Mississippi State. Coverage begins at 730 Eastern with Thursday game night presented by Gateway. Kentucky, Mississippi State on Thursday night. Log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Gino, you ever been to Starkville? I have never been to Starkville. Okay. We will have to I'm get happy to say that. We'll have to get you there <laughs> <laughs> next next year. On third down and long, blitz is coming. Randall L steps away, hits his man. Dorsey to the 44-yard line. First down, Indiana. I have been very, very impressed with the way Randall L is throwing the football. Yesterday, talking to the coaches, they thought we were going to throw the ball 35 to 40 times. I didn't think Randall L had it in him to do this. But he has been right on the money with these balls. His touchdown earlier, and there in the pass to Dorsey on the crossing route. Those are the hardest passes for a quarterback to complete those crossing routes. Randall L. swings it out. Caught by Williams. Cuts back. Inside the 30. And the Hoosiers are on the move. Down by seven to number 14, Michigan. That's the sign of a quarterback making good decisions. They, Antoine Randall comes out from center. They're running the option down the right hand side. He drops back to pass. Doesn't have his primary receiver. He's able to dump it off to Williams, the man who he's faking the option with earlier in the play. to the end. 
end zone. Overthrew his man. He had Dorsey open. Second down, 10. He was wide open. Jerry Dorsey down the left sidelines. You see Randall fakes the handoff to Johnson, sets up quickly. The pass, there you see Dorsey, he's got no one covering him on the left side of the end zone. That's where a quarterback going to the left, getting your feet around, I think you you get kind of excited. Maybe you had a little adrenaline rush and try to put a little bit extra on the football. Second down. And 10. That one's caught. Darren Graham lost the ball, and Indiana gets it back. That time he got the feet around and put a nice touch on it. Nice touch. And those are the hardest throws for a right-handed quarterback to make. Anytime when you're on the move to the left, you have to come turn all the way, get around. Here you see him. Flips his shoulders back, makes a nice throw, nice tight spiral to Darren Graham, and then Graham gets a lick put on him, and Dorsey able to recover the fumble. They, Indiana has been fortunate in the second half. They weren't so fortunate early in the game with a lot of drop balls. They're getting fortunate now. Four fumbles, one loss. On first and ten. The pitch. Williams slips, gets back up, and is down to the 13-yard line, a gain of maybe two. James Hall made the stop. Rich, Indiana is able to score a touchdown here. We're looking at a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. Does then Michigan start thinking about what happened last week. I mean it, this hasn't been Michigan making mistakes. This has been Indiana coming out and dominating and winning the battle line of scrimmage and Antoine went ran well making plays. Blitz coming. Randall L in trouble. Throws it to the end zone. It's deflected and incomplete. And Dahani Jones just planted Randall L at the 27 yard line. And there he may have been forcing it. Anytime you have a quarterback, you move around the pocket a lot, bootleg, things are, and Indiana does what ran well. You never, ever want to throw the ball late down the middle. There are too many defenders in there. There's a couple safeties. The linebackers are able to deep, get deep in their drops. He may have gotten away with one there. Third down, nine. Randall L. will pitch it. It's A.C. Carter, and Carter is in! He stepped out at the three-yard line. One official had him in, the other official at the three-yard line. It is, however, a first down and goal for Indiana. And this is what Antoine Randall L., the quarterback, can do to a defense. On third and nine, most college teams are going to call a pass to pick up the first down. There you see just coming down the line scrimmage makes a nice flip to Carter and Johnson in front of him makes a click a key block and just barely steps out of bounds at the three. Good work by the officials. That was one where maybe his heel wasn't down so maybe he didn't step out of bounds but it sure looked like it. Indiana calls another timeout here. Now they only have one left. Going to the fourth quarter, a tie ball game. You want to save those timeouts. Randall L. with the football at the two. We'll come over to talk to Cam Cameron. We'll get to Don in a moment. Don's playing with the grass down here. <laughs> He's hoping to get a pitch here. Randall on the option keeps it and he is not in. Down at the one. Victor Hobson made the stop. 
Let's go back down to Don McPherson. Hey, Donnie, does it matter for a quarterback when you run the option to the right or the left side? Actually, Rich, going to the left is easier in the pitch game because you have the belly of the ball in your hand. Going to the right, you're holding the ball as if to throw it. So it's actually easier to control because you have more of the ball in your hand going left. All right, Donnie, thank you. 17-10, Michigan on top of Indiana. We're back to Bloomington after this. Bloomington. Bloomington, with good reason. The Indiana Hoosiers trail number 14, Michigan, by a touchdown. And the Hoosiers have second and goal from the one. Randall L. Johnson is up. Is he in? No. Jeremy Johnson, the true freshman fullback, 5'11, 263. When he reported for fall practice, he was 291. Pretty big fullback. Camp Cameron told him if he didn't drop 30 pounds, he wouldn't let him play fullback. Would him let him? Would not let him wear number one. Rich, there was a guy down in Miami, the same situation. Came in as a tight end, 250 pounds. He couldn't lose the weight. They moved him to D tackle, and now it's Warren Sapp. Pretty good D tackle for Buck Tampa Bay. Third and goal. Johnson again is stuffed. Rich, one thing here, you have a quarterback like Antoine Randall L who can make any person out there on that field miss a tackle. I think you have to keep the ball in his hands as long as possible and maybe run the option here. Michigan did not go for it on fourth and a yard and punted to Indiana. Fourth and a yard. Indiana goes for it. Randall L. To the end zone. Touchdown Hoosiers. Jeremy Johnson. The player who got you there make the plays. Antoine Randall has been making plays like that all game. Let him throw the football. That will run the option to get the ball in the end zone. The extra point is good. The Indiana Hoosiers were down 17 nothing in this ball game. They are right back even. Camp Cameron and the Hoosiers 17 apiece with Michigan. Inside the stadium here in Bloomington 17 17. Anthony Thomas is standing at the five yard line. That shows you how important things are right now. Lloyd Carr. He wants Thomas to return this kick. talked about early you have a broken hand you get hit in it it gets sore towards the later part of the game there you see getting hit I don't know if that's his hand or just a, a, a nice play by the defender and then Indiana able to fall on the ball there at the end of the game if, if he's able to pick it up on the run they, they score a touchdown on that play Ron Bethel eventually 
recovered it. Curtis Randall had a shot at it, but Bethel picks it up. That's the first kickoff that Thomas has returned on the day. The Wolverines made a switch, and it's cost them. How dearly, we'll find out. Whistles and flags and movement. Pika Elisar. The Bridget. left tackle was moving. And while the Indiana ball. players were Brady very Sam excited, I looked on the Michigan ball. sidelines. Everybody Offense. just put their head down, and they really had no emotion. If I'm on that sideline, I'm getting pissed off, and I'm going to start yelling at some of my teammates and saying, hey, you guys got to start picking up because we're in another dogfight here about to go down by seven. Julius Curry had been returning kicks today for Michigan. Thomas fumbled that one. First and goal. Just inside the 15. Randall L. Randall L. Out of bounds. At the six. Down to the sidelines, Don McPherson. Donnie. Hey, Julian, you're exactly right. Before the game, I, coached, I talked to defensive back coach, Michigan defensive back coach Terrell Austin, who said that he was hoping that his guys were tired of losing. It doesn't appear that way on the sideline. These guys have got to pick up the pace. They've got to pick up the spark. When they went in for that last score, these guys, like you said, their heads dropped, and the coaches seemed a little resolved that Randall L is going to make big plays. Was it even worse when the special teams was they would turn the ball over did they I mean it looked like David Terrell he just turned right around sat back down on the bench yeah they really haven't picked it up a, a few times with the other big plays that's the only time they get fired up Randall L made one man miss and somehow makes a two yard gain out of what looked like a four or five yard loss Dahani Jones made the stop and now Indiana is faced with a third down and goal from inside the five. Gino, one of your keys to the game was play 60 minutes, and Michigan hasn't done that this year. Play 60 minutes. You can't get outscored in the fourth quarter and expect to win football games. It's so important for teams. We always used to say, win the fourth quarter battle, and you're going to win the football game. Shotgun on third and goal. Randall L. Flushed. Throwing. Touchdown, Hoosiers! Jerry Dorsey. And a tense Michigan sideline gets even tighter. Rich, I'm just laughing at myself and how fun it is to watch Antoine Randall. He's able to step up in the pocket, get by himself some time. The whole Michigan defense bites up to try to not let him be able to run the ball in for the touchdown. Throws it right over their head for the touchdown to Dorsey. Point up and good. Twenty. 17. Indiana has scored 24 unanswered points, and the Hoosiers lead the Wolverines in Bloomington. That's why you call it John. 15 this year. That's a new school record. The shortness of the drive came off the fumble on the kickoff. Here's a look at the touchdown. You see Randall L just step up into the pocket, able to avoid the rush, and then Michigan, all the secondary, comes forward to not let him in. Finds Dorsey in the back corner of the end zone. There's Cam Cameron saying, "Why? Well, I think I've seen more exciting plays than that from my quarterback Randall L. Kind of, oh, good, we scored another touchdown. He's a very calm and cool touchdown. Remember, it was Anthony Thomas who tried to return the last kick and fumbled it. He's not back there this time. David Terrell. Won't get a chance to return this one. It's kicked out of bounds. Michigan will have good field position. Andy Payne misfires. We head to the studios. Reese Davis. Reese.
Bridge Purdue in Minnesota still slugging it out. 26-14 Boilermakers when Thomas Hamner gets loose and just explodes. 60 yards. He's going to take it to the house. He is gone. 26-21 at that point. But Drew Brees coming right back, finding Randall Lane. Splendid catch. Eight yards down. Boilermakers up by 12 very late over on ESPN. Thanks, Reese. We have quite a ball game here. Tom Brady has gone the distance. Anthony Thomas squeezes this one. And out of bounds he goes right in midfield. Sherrod Wallace made the stop. I'll put it to both quarterbacks here. If Michigan on this drive struggles, does this man enter the ball game, Drew Henson? I don't think so. I don't think it's been a situation where we're getting poor quarterback play from Brady. I just don't think the supporting cast we're getting the the play that you, we usually see from a Michigan team. Flags, whistles, and movement. Prior to the snap, dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Don McPherson, I think you'll agree. We have found the Michigan coaches very tight and tense this week. Is that happening right now on the sideline, and how does that affect this quarterback equation? Not only tight and tense, but a little perplexed. They stood over the grease board wondering what to diagram. You can't diagram with anything with Randall Hill. He does it all himself. On first down, Brady. Terrell the catch, and Terrell is loose, and he might go. Terrell is inside the 10, and he's down to the 8-yard line. <laughs> Tom Brady made a nice throw. And Michigan is inside the Hoosier 10-yard line. Rich, these are the type of big plays that we usually see from a Michigan team. See just Brady taking a deep drop, makes a, throws a strike on a post route for David Terrell. Once you get in his hands, good enough athlete to make a few guys miss. Thomas, they don't miss. Well, they did miss him. Anthony Thomas down to the seven yard line. Joslyn Goodman finished him off. Second down and goal for Michigan. The thing is, in the past, Michigan teams, they don't need to get down to come back. They, they're usually very good about playing up to their ability, getting the lead, and keep building on that lead. These last few weeks, they get behind, and then they start feeling they have to play. Second and goal. Brady to throw. Has his man into the end zone. Touchdown. Benny Jopru, the freshman tight end. And the Wolverines answer. The Wolverines answer, but I think that whole drive was set up by the kicker on the kickoff. Sending the ball out of bounds, Michigan getting the ball at the 35 as opposed to saying, hey, we want to make you return one like the last time, and they end up turning it over. It's a good point. Epstein's kick is good. Just under 11 minutes left in this one. We're all tied up. Number 14, Michigan. And the upstart, Indiana Hoosiers, 24 apiece. 24, number 14, Michigan, and Indiana. 24 consecutive points by Indiana, and Michigan just stopped that streak with a score of their own. This is Darren Graham. He's out to the 16-yard line. Tie ball game, tight ball game. Let's go back to 1979. Michigan and Indiana tied at 21. John Wangler, the Michigan quarterback, to Lawrence Reed. No timeouts left, so he throws it out of bounds. That's Lee Corso, our own Lee Corso. That stopped the clock with six seconds left. Anthony Carter, ball game. Michigan wins it. They changed the rule after that, after much consternation from Coach Corso. The man standing next to Corso was Cam Cameron. He was the backup quarterback of that 79 team that went on to have a thrilling Holiday Bowl win over BYU. Antoine Randall L. slips down 
Is it a throw or a fumble? It's a fumble. Jake Freisinger made the hit. And Indiana has recovered. First time all game we've been able to see Michigan put pressure on Randall L and him not able to ex escape. He doesn't see the defender coming from behind him. Just hits him right in the back. Fumbles the ball. Fortunately for Indiana, able to recover the fumble and keep the football. Freisinger, a junior. Second down. A loss of five on that play. Draw play to Williams. Getting outside. LeBron Williams, big pickup, short of the first down to the 23 yard line. Third down and three when we get back from this visit with Reese Davis. Reese? Rich Gino is going to be feeling a little better now. West Virginia and Miami. Kane's down 20 to 14. Kenny Kelly in a world of trouble. Sack. No, he's not. Kelly's loose and he finds a wide open. Trenton Portis with a touchdown. Hurricanes back on top. 21 to 20. And on that moisture slicking turf underneath the dome, Boston College up on Syracuse 24 23. Gino feeling better. Don still worried. Big third down. Randall L. Throws it. Batted down. Broken up by Dwayne Patman. Great play by Patman, the junior out of San Diego. Patman just went to knock the ball down. I think he could have just went for the interception. He might have been dancing in the end zone right now if he just tried to catch that football. Fourth down and three. See, Rich, as soon as you start talking bad about my hurricanes, then they start calling back. So. <laughs> I'm your lucky charm. <laughs> Michigan almost blocked their third punt of the day. That's a dangerous catch by Diallo Johnson. And down he goes at the 33 yard line. Drew Hagan has been walking on the wild side. Two blocked and about three or four near misses. A punt here right up the middle. Colin Frost can't block him after snapping the ball. Jordan has broke through the middle on every single punt that, that that we've had. We have a tight, close ball game. If it comes down to a block punt again later in the ball game, that's going to be a big play. Anthony Thomas, the catch at the 35, and he's dropped to the 38-yard line. It's a gain of four for this Michigan offense that somehow sprung to life on their last possession. Sprung to life with a big play by David Terrell. Rich, Indiana really has to address that problem with Jordan coming up the middle, especially if they get another punt situation. Most of Michigan's damage back in that first quarter. And Thomas has stopped short of the first down. Later on today on ESPN and ESPN2, number one, Florida State against Virginia. That's at 7 Eastern. The Hokies, number three in the country against Pittsburgh. That's at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Here in Bloomington, number 14, Michigan, blew a 17-0 lead. Tied the ball game on their last possession. Thomas. Anthony Thomas, he's into Indiana territory and down to the 43-yard line. Joslyn Goodman made the stop. by number 51, Goodman. The Michigan offensive line doing a heck of a job blocking. Shea, the fullback, makes a nice block there. And Thomas able to get in the, get in the secondary before getting touched. One thing I'm surprised about, Rich, is not how good Anthony Thomas is, but how they have a lack of depth at tailback position here at Michigan. Brady back. Quick throw to the sidelines. Thomas the catch, and he's out of bounds. It wasn't supposed to be that way, but Justin Fargus, one of the top high school running backs who came to Michigan a couple years ago, suffered a bad break of his leg last year. And he is red shirting this year. They hope to have him back 
next year. And I think we're so used to seeing Michigan teams have a one-two punch at tailback where you get no drop off from the starter to the second teamer. Here, Michigan doesn't have that luxury. 33 carries, 153 yards. Second down. Thomas again, and he fires his way down to the 32-yard line. He's got another Michigan first down. Sherrod Wallace made the stop. And I'll tell you what, he's putting his shoulders down, and he's running hard now. But can he hold up? I mean, you can't expect a player to touch the ball, carry the ball 30 times a game every week for you. You're bound to get banged up, Nick. You know him with the broken finger last week. Walter Cross is in the game now at the tailback spot. Brady will throw to him. Cross has it. Inside the 20, and Walter Cross, the sophomore out of Fort Washington, Maryland, is out of bounds. And a big pickup for the Michigan Wolverines. What woke this team up, Gino? I'm not really sure what woke them up. I think finally realizing they were down to Indiana saying, hey, we're still Michigan. You know, we as long as we play to our ability, maybe the coaches got in their ears. Don and I thought they were a little dejected on the sidelines. They made may the, one of the seniors pick them up. Carter back in the game and back with the ball inside the 10, inside the five. He's down to the four. Anthony Thomas. Kemp Rasmussen made the stop for Indiana. They call him the A train. He has had a busy day today. Richard, maybe Brady got into Michigan's head. The Michigan he sat him down and said, hey, listen, we have to start scoring here. We have to come together as an offense and make some big plays. Our defense, it's been tough to stop Randall L. And I don't know if any defense can stop Randall L. First and goal, Thomas. Anthony Thomas is in. Touchdown, Michigan. Two straight scores by Michigan, and the Wolverines are back on top. Maybe the Michigan players were waiting for Henson to come in saying, oh, well, when Henson comes in, we'll start making a few big plays, and then when Brady comes back in, he'll continue. Lloyd Carr didn't make the switch, and now Michigan's starting to play up to their ability. Aiden Epstein with the extra point. A busy day for Anthony Thomas. He's not done yet. Michigan back on top of Indiana. 31 to 24. A busy day for this A train. 24 Michigan. The cat in that hat has watched quite a game. A 17 nothing Michigan lead. A 24 17 Indiana lead and two straight scores. This the last of them. And that touchdown all set up by that block by Aaron Shea right at the corner. And Thomas able to dive in right there at the end. He's had a heck of a ball game. Boy, he's been a, a real workhorse for Michigan today. Epstein puts his foot into it. And this one is through the uprights. Is that good for a field goal? Does he get two points for that? Style points. He's got that kind of range. He hit a 56 yarder against Michigan State. Look at that, 176 yards, averaging four. Almost five yards of carry. I thought he'd have to average right around four, four and a half for Michigan to have a chance, but more than expect exceeded my expectations. Randall L. Looking downfield, running downfield. Getting outside and getting out of bounds. He was hit late. And there was no flag. I don't think he was hit that hard, though. Awful, awful close to a late here. 
Randall Hill, so explosive, steps out of bounds. That's a good, that's a good job. Yeah, that's a good job by the defender going after him and able and slipping a little bit and able to pull off Randall L. Second down. It was a gain of seven. Short of the first down. Josh Williams makes the stop on Levron Williams. And so it's third down and about a yard now for this Indiana offense. Rich, I think late in the ball game, you're under six minutes. Now you start having the clock may become a factor, and Indiana only have a one timeout. Could come back to hurt them. Fullback Jeremy Johnson is right on the sticks. It looks like he's got the first down. He does. Cam Cameron really hasn't shown much emotion today. He spent 10 years in the Michigan program, from graduate assistant to quarterback coach. Went on to coach quarterbacks for the Washington Redskins, and then Indiana brought him home. Anytime the leader of a ball club, whether it's a head coach or quarterback, you have to stay even keel. You can't be too high or ever too low in a football game. You always look, have to look to the next play and what you're going to do. Randall L. scrambles, looking, throwing down the field. Got a man, Dorsey. He's fine. He spectacular he runs he can throw he steps up in the pocket just like he did on the touchdown the whole Michigan defense says oh we're not going to let him run for the first down and is able to fire a bomb right down the sidelines off balance to Dorsey a big extra point is good Lloyd Carr and his Michigan Wolverines cannot pull away from this Indiana Hoosier team. Antoine Randall is a big play waiting to happen. He's done it all day. Steps up in the pocket. There you see five scores. He sees him, throws off balance, basically put, gives it all he can. And oh, just a perfect throw to Dorsey. And Tommy Hendricks has got nowhere. He's coming up as a defender. To go hit Randall L. See Dorsey down the sidelines, make a little move. He's just basically a clear out receiver, but the secondary for Michigan forgets about him and lets him go. And Randall L, being the type of player he is, able to find him late down the sidelines. There you see Randall L. He knows when he throws that ball. As long as he got enough on it, it's going to go in for six. Sees Dorsey catch it. Six points. Dorsey, the junior out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Five minutes left, fourth quarter. Rich, I tell you what, I think. When I play with the Lions, playing with Barry Sanders, guys used to sit in the film room and just be like, wow, how did he do that? Indiana has to do that on Sundays when they watch films of Antoine Randall making these plays. David Terrell up to his 14-yard line. And Terrell is out to the 25-yard line. They say he's a runner first and then a passer. You know what, Gino? I don't know. His passing to me is 
just about as impressive as his running. Spectacular. He steps up in the pocket. He's done it all day. Opens up a lane. Look at that. Off balance. Throws away from his body. Able to get enough on the ball. Throws that ball at least 40 yards down the field to Dorsey in the air. Wow. The last two times. You see Randall L. The last two times that Michigan has touched the football. They've gone length of the field. Brady. Terrell. Makes the catch. Cuts back to the 37 yard line. The Wolverines have been impressive in their last two drives. Parents day in Bloomington. Not quite a full house, but almost. Plenty of Michigan fans on hand. Rich Waltz, Gino Toretta, Don McPherson. 31 31. Thomas getting outside. He stopped. Justin Smith finished him off. After a, a brave Sherrod Wallace got in, or rather, I think it was Greg Yeldell. And got underneath Thomas's feet. And Rich, you talked about last week the Indiana defense had over 90 plays on defense. They got 67 already today. Fatigue may be a factor late in the ball game. Thomas is out. Brady, a bullet that's caught by Marcus Knight. He's at midfield, and Knight is down to the 48-yard line. And right now, Indiana cannot stop. Tom Brady and fatigue may be a factor anytime you're playing this many snaps most of the defense for Indiana plays and starts on special teams so tack on 70 tack on about 10 or 15 more plays and that's how many times how much they've been on the field Don McPherson what's up Jimmy you talk about the fatigue well, Michigan offensive line is starting to wear these guys down it's still pretty hot down here on the field they're starting to huff and puff a little bit and these long drives are killing them 70 degrees at game time Brady lots of time dropped flag goes down Bill Seymour was the intended receiver Jason Zapp and Camp Cameron is making the call Personal foul, face mask, Indiana. And he made the wrong call. Wow, that's a big penalty. Goes from second and ten. Now it's another first down for Personal Michigan. Foul, face mask on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And as, and as Don said, the Michigan offensive line wearing down. There's the, there's the face mask on Zap. Just pulls down Brady there at the end of the play. And that was after he had the ball gone. And it's first and ten, Michigan, at the Indiana 33-yard line. <laughs> Thomas is hit and dropped. Kemp Rasmussen. A significant loss of four second and 14 significant because field goal range right now is important field goal range is important rich but what I'm thinking about here you're almost at three minutes left in the game second and 12 if Indiana is able to hold them this is maybe a situation where they would have called a timeout if they had three and maybe one to burn Brady Going deep, flags down. Lots of them. O.J. Spencer was tangled up in maize and blue. Probably a smart play by O.J. Spencer. He was beat deep down the sidelines. Just ends up tackling the receiver. It's not like the NFL. It's only a 10 yard penalty. Not a spot of contact foul. Maybe they're discussing whether the plays on catch or the ball was uncatchable because I think the ball did sail out of bounds. Holding. Oh. See, 
Reggie Terrell down the sidelines. Little corner out, and, and Spencer's beat. He, he broke down the cushion. Spencer just ends up tackling him, so he doesn't give up the six points. The difference between holding and interference, Gino, you know, is five yards, but it's a first down. It's a 10 yard mark off the 28 yard line. The difference is five yards less. You have to kick the field goal if you don't go anywhere, too. For Michigan. Hayden Epstein is the long distance boomer for the Wolverines. A 56 yarder on his resume. Thomas to the 28, no game. Do you know the clock, a factor now at two and a half minutes left? And Indiana, as you've pointed out, wasted two timeouts. Really unable to stop it right now. And, and as long as Michigan can get probably five to six more yards, they don't need a first down to attempt a field goal and be in field goal range. So what that does is they can bring the play clock down to, let's say, maybe 40 seconds. Michigan can, well, maybe a minute 15 before Indiana can get the ball back. Thomas, the lone tailback. Here comes the blitz. Thomas on a draw. He's outside. He could go. He's out of bounds. Anthony Thomas to the five. Mike McGrath made the stop. With every, with every big play that Michigan makes as the clock runs down, you see Thomas, the Indiana blitz, and Thomas able to see it and just makes a good cut to the right side. And McGrath saves the touchdown there at the five yard line. Michigan has all three of their timeouts. Thomas to the two. Anthony Thomas. He's inside. If you're Indiana, do you burn your timeout? I don't think you burn your time out here. Me personally. There's an injury right now. Rich, Michigan having the size differential over Indiana being able to overpower them this late down the ball game. Maurice Williams, the junior tackle for Michigan on his way to the sidelines. College football today is coming up. Reese Davis and John McAbeck here. Michigan and Indiana, 31 apiece. Michigan football. Clock is restarted after Williams left the field. Thomas in the backfield. He'll get it. And he stopped. Now that it's third down and goal. Does Indiana burn a timeout? Indiana's burning it. If they look to the sidelines, they have to look to the sidelines. I think they even lost a few seconds there because Cam Cameron, as soon as he saw his defense stop Michigan, he put him in a third down, third two, third and three. Third and goal situation. You call the timeout and hope they don't score on third down. Then they have to kick a field goal. Lloyd Carr. Tom Brady, fifth year senior, out of San Mateo, California, Sarah High School. Brady has played well today. He had some early drops. Cam Cameron, who played football and basketball here at Indiana. His Hoosiers, who right now are two wins away from bowl eligibility. Four and four, three and two in the Big Ten Conference. And here's where strategy comes in, Rich. On first down and second down, Cam Cameron had his defense blitz Michigan. Does Michigan think, are they going to blitz again? If they are, we're going to throw the football, try to utilize or man coverage on our wide receivers. Or does Cameron say, hey, we blitzed a couple of times here. Do we play zone in this type of situation? I think because it's a third three. If you blitz, you're, you're probably, if you're Michigan, you're able to stop them 
on a running play. So I think Michigan's got to call a pass here. I would call a pass here. I call a pass a lot more times you, than runs. Well, tell you. You, you, <laughs> that's not a surprise. <laughs> Well, here we go. Third and goal. Third and goal. A field goal on fourth down obviously gives Michigan the lead. The Wolverines would love to stick it in. Looks like one on one coverage on David Terrell out on the outside. Oh, here McGrath comes doubling him. Brady with time going to scramble and he won't get it. The clock continues to roll. Michigan will send its field goal unit on. But before they do Rich they're going to let this clock run down as much as they can probably get the play clock down to one or zero call a timeout because then you're not going to give the ball back to Randall L with a lot of time left to do anything. Field goal unit coming on. Well, do you call timeout with the field goal unit out there, Gino? I don't think it's bad. They have three left. They can burn one of them here. They're not going to call it. Epstein. Yeah, I see. They did. See, now you've taken the play clock down to 21 seconds without getting a delay of game, so there's no change. For Michigan, they have three timeouts. They have one timeout to burn. Well, they probably have two timeouts to burn, so it's not a factor for them. I'm surprised they acted like they rushed the field goal unit on the field right there at the last minute. Looked a little disorganized, and the kicker <laughs> a little nervous there. Tom Brady and Lloyd Carr. The Wolverines last week blew a huge lead at home against Illinois. This week it was Antoine Randall L. Who came back from 17 nothing. To take a short lived 24 17 lead. And then Randall L. Led the Hoosiers back. To tie the game at 31. College football today immediately following. And Rich Indiana hasn't taken a lot of time to score these last few drives Randall out when they were on three plays before he was able to scramble out of the pocket and throw the ball downfield 21 seconds still a lot of time on the clock for those type of plays not for the majority of offenses in college football. From 20 yards Epstein. It is good. Hayden Epstein drills it, and Michigan is on top by three, 18 seconds left. Whew. The Wolverines on top, the final seconds when we get back to Bloomington. Number 14, Michigan, 34, Indiana, 31. All but 18 seconds has been played of this game. We may need the final 18 to determine the winner. Antoine Randall L will get to touch the football one more time. Down below, Don McPherson. Donnie. Rich, this is an Indiana team that never gave up. The coaches say that these guys came to play and they came to play 60 minutes. It's a little subdued here, but you have to think that this team is positive and upbeat about the way they played today. They played a Michigan team very tough. These guys are holding their heads up over here. Aiden Epstein has a real strong right leg. in the end zone and down. No time escapes. They'll bring it out to the 20. Strategy here Gino what are you looking for as a quarterback you got 18 seconds and no timeouts. 80 yards and a touchdown. All right. <laughs> but seriously folks. Well I mean you, you have to think they have to get to about the 25 30 yard line to be have a chance to kick a field goal and score you're really not thinking a touchdown here and 18 seconds left to go 80 yards you're probably not thinking touchdown you're thinking maybe some deep corner routes maybe pick up 15 20 yards a pass play because they're going to need on average 20 yards of completion here to get in that field goal situation with only 18 seconds left no timeouts a sack probably ends the game 
clock stops on a first down. Briefly. Randall L. To the sidelines. Caught out of bounds. Yes. At the 34, but it ate up seven seconds for a 14 yard gain. Rich, that's on average what a play takes. It takes about six and a half, seven seconds per play. So anytime a, a offense is in a two minute situation, this is a little bit different because they don't have any timeouts left. That's how you're gauging if you're going to take another shot at a touchdown or just go ahead and kick the field goal. But they need to really pick up the rest of the yardage here on this play to have their field goal unit on the on the team on the field to attempt the game time field goal. Randall L. in trouble. Scrambling. Got to get to the sideline. He does. Close to a late hit. Four seconds left. Now you're thinking 55 yards and a touchdown because you do not have enough time to complete a pass deep enough in less than four seconds. So you're thinking Hail Mary here. They'll probably line up all three of their wide receivers left side of the field. Randall will take a deep drop, throw it as high and as far as he possibly can. Michigan has called the timeout. So the Wolverines want to talk it over. College football today coming up quickly. Reese Davis, John Makovic, all the highlights from the Big Ten, the SEC, and all the conferences, as well as highlights of this one. And what an exciting ball game it's been. Cam Cameron's Hoosiers down 17 to nothing, roared back 24 17 lead, four touchdown passes for that man, 321 yards of total offense. But give credit to Michigan, who got up. After hibernating for two quarters, their offense clicked into gear. They ripped off three long scoring drives, the final of which was a Hayden Epstein field goal that has given the Wolverines a three point lead. Something else to think about, Gino. Certainly, Randall L. is going to have to heave this one at least 55 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. Pass interference in the college game is a 15 yard penalty. Were it to occur here, this makes for a closer Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I mean, it, the 50, 15 it yards a, doesn't it, get him in field goal position. So my point. here's where Cam Cameron probably, if there's a situation where maybe one of his backup wide, backup wide receivers is a little bit taller than the starter, he's going to put them in the football game because you want your tallest, fastest, and your most sure handed receivers in this ball game right here. Here we go. Antoine Randall L will get a running start. And away it goes. Into the end zone. Jump ball. Deflected. Incomplete. The Hoosiers had a shot at it. Jerry Dorsey, I think, may have gotten a hand on it. And this one is history. <laughs> Two good friends. They worked together on that Michigan staff for 10 years. Lloyd Carr will escape Bloomington with a nail biting 34 31 win. Randall just on the half roll. Gets a little head of steam. He's throwing this football as far as he can. Put a little bit of air under, under it. Gives his guys a chance to catch it. But Michigan able to knock it away at the end of the play. There you see Dorsey goes up. Wow, it looked like it hit him right in the face mask. He definitely had a chance to catch that ball and, and win the football game. See him get up? Wow. Whew. Stay tuned for all the scores and highlights on college football today. Regino Toretta, Don McPherson, I'm Rich Waltz. Michigan beats Indiana. We'll see you from Bloomington.